Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking all about cream makeup. Cream is having a moment this year. It has been for a while, but especially this year, we're getting so many new cream launches, blushes, bronzers, highlights. So I'm going to be ranking them today. I saw my friend Samantha March do this recently and I was like, I have to do that too. So I will leave her video linked down below. And let me just say, if you've already watched Sam's video, you might laugh a bit watching this one because a few of her like tip top spots are kind of low on my list and vice versa. So I think it's always funny how makeup works like that and it's different for everyone based on our preferences. So throughout this video, I'll make sure to really describe why a product works or doesn't work for me because sometimes the reasons I hate a product might be the reason you love a product. Okay, let's get started. For this video, we're gonna be going through 12 rankings. These are all the cream products that I have right now. I have had other cream products I've tried in the past that I have decluttered or used up, but these are the ones that I have at the moment. And to be honest, there's not anything in here that I think is terrible. I would say we're kind of ranking these from just okay up to, oh my gosh, these are amazing. So the bottom spot, I bet you didn't see this coming because I did not see this coming either. Persona Cosmetics, their new bronzer stick. I bet you never thought you'd see the day where I ranked a Persona Cosmetics product at the bottom of a ranking video because I never thought I would see the day either because I'm normally obsessed with everything they launch. But this, I really struggled to make it work. And it's not the worst cream product I've ever tried, but when I set all of the products in front of me prepping for this video, I was like, I just like all the other ones a little bit more. So this is their newest launch. This is called the Bronze Multi Stick. I have the shade Dune. Now you saw me test this out for the first time in a video and I thought I liked it when I was first trying it, but the more I've tested it, I have realized that it picks up my foundation and I didn't notice it at first because it doesn't pick it up the way some other cream products do. Like I've had products where you'll have an entire stripe missing, you know what I mean? That's not really my experience with this, but it ends up moving my foundation around. And you guys, I have tried everything. I've tried applying this first before foundation. I like that, but I feel like it's so, it's already kind of sheer. So when you do that, even with a light coverage foundation, it doesn't really give me the effect I'm after. I think my best result is when I tap it over top with my finger, but still it does move the foundation around. I do not like when I swipe it on and then blend it out. Um, when you pick it up with a brush and apply it, it's a little bit better. But the way I like this is on my no foundation days. So if you're watching this and you're saying, hey, I never wear foundation and I love cream products, I just wear like a few cream products and some concealer, you might really love this. But I have not been able to find a way to make it work with my foundation. It just moves it around a little bit. I wanted to love it. I'm so bummed to put this in the last spot, but realistically, I like all of the other products more. Okay, next in line, this is from Ciate London. If I would've ranked this a few years ago, I probably would've ranked it way higher, but this is their Dewy Stick. It's such a unique product. I think there's a very specific audience for this, and if you are the right person for this, you will probably love it, but I would say a lot of people probably would not like this. So it's basically, oh, hold on, hold on. I wanted to swatch all these on my arm for you, so let me go back. We'll swatch the Persona. Very creamy. I almost wonder if that's why I have problems with my foundation with this, because maybe it's like too creamy. I don't know. But this one is a clear balm, so I'm going to swatch it, but you're not going to see anything. The name Dewy Stick is so appropriate for this, because it doesn't have any pigment. It's a balm, so... It, it is a little sticky, like you might get your hair stuck in it, but if you like no makeup makeup and you like your highlight to be very subtle but still look natural, you would probably love this. And I do like it as a base as well. Sometimes I'll apply this and do a powder over top and I think that makes it look a little more creamy and natural. Really beautiful on no foundation days as well. Honestly, these two together for a natural no foundation look would be cute. I like this a lot. I just feel like it's not gonna be for everyone and it's not gonna be for every occasion. There are days when I wear this and I love it, but I feel like I'm less inclined to reach for this when I have some other highlights that I feel are better for day to day. You know, this is a very specific look I'm going for. The next one surprised me a little bit as well because I really like this product and I wouldn't expect it to be so low on my list, but realistically, I just like everything else a little bit more. So this is from Pixi. This is their multi balm. So I have the shade Baby Petal. 
This is an older product. These are being discontinued, but sometimes you can still find them. Another one I like to wear on no foundation days. You're gonna see a theme here. I love wearing cream products when I'm not wearing foundation, but this one I think is nice because you can just do a little swipe swipe right around there and it gives a really natural effect. I don't really have anything negative to say about this. I just think everything else on this list, I like a tiny bit more. And I did notice a pattern when I was laying all these out for this video. Look at all the bottom ones. They're all stick products. So I think that's a preference of mine because as we get higher, I've got a lot more like squeezy tube liquid blushes, bronzers, and highlights, which is interesting because if you were to ask me which one I prefer, in my mind, I would think, oh, these little chubby sticks, but apparently that's not the case because the next one is another one of those. I do like this, but I just like everything else a little bit more. This is from Milk Makeup. I think this is good and it's so perfect for summer, but I just don't reach for this as often as my others. This is like a very specific look I'm going for. Again, honestly, an exact dupe for the Pixie almost. This is in the shade Work. This is the mini, and as I've said before, if you are interested in this or the bronzer or their highlight, I recommend picking up the mini because there's still a ton of product in the mini. The full size is huge. This kind of like the Pixie is like a semi sheer product. So both of these are very easy to work with. Like they do not dry down quickly. So you don't really, you can't mess them up. I think they look beautiful on their own or if you put a powder over top, but they're just not as standout to me as the ones we're gonna get into. So here is where I shock some people and maybe people start to disagree with me. But the next spot I'm giving to this, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in Spotlight. I like this, I like it, but it's $40 and I just don't think that it's worth the hype in my opinion. I expected it to be this really radiant, beautiful, natural highlight, and I like the effect that it gives, but it just was not a standout to me. I also find that it fades faster than I would like for the price tag. I mean, it is very pretty, but I just don't find myself reaching for this as often as I do a lot of my other highlights. That being said, I'm not as big of a fan of cream highlights. If I had to rank the cream categories, like the top of my list would be cream blush. And I just don't find myself reaching for cream highlights as often. So that could be more of a me thing. I know that's an unpopular opinion because people swear by these, but I just didn't love the highlighter stick. I like it. I like it a lot, but I don't love it. Next is the contour wand. This I have in the shade medium to fair. This is a contour and I do like it. I think this is very easy to work with. Like ah, probably one of my favorite products when I'm going for a natural contour because you truly can't mess it up. Like that's the, the benefit of this product. Perfect for beginners because it's so easy and the undertone is really, really natural for a contour. So it just looks like a true shadow because it's not too cool tone, but it's definitely not that warm either. I think this is easy to work with. It always looks nice, but I don't find myself reaching for this as often as I find myself reaching for the other products that we're going to get into. So I like this, but it's a little bit lower on my ranking, even though it's good. I've got a few others that I find to be better. This next one, I feel like just is probably expired right now. <laughs> still smells fine, still works fine. This is the Glossier Cloud Paint. I have mine in the shade Beam. If you like a liquid blush, I think this formula is really good. Again, kind of a foolproof product. Like you can't really mess this up. It'll blend out so easily. Mine looks a little dirty and used. I've used up a ton of this. Like I said, I've had it for years and this little bottle, this little tube will last you for so long. Like the tiniest bit goes such a long way. You can do a heavy blush look. You can do a subtle look. If you think you got too much, if you just take your sponge and tap it out, it'll blend itself out. It doesn't dry that quickly. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to work and get the effect you want. Whereas I've tried other cream products where if you don't blend them out in seconds, like you're done for, it's it's not gonna happen. This one, you can 
This one's a little more patient. That's what I'm trying to say. You've got time, no need to rush. Unlike this next one, this one does dry down quickly, but I find that this has a better wear time than almost any of the other creams on this list. So these are the new ones from Bite. This is their Daycation Blush Formula. The one that I love is Melon Mojito. I also, they sent me Coconut Rum as well. This one is like, it's very bronzy. And they mentioned using this as a cream bronzer, but it's so glowy. I, I tried that and I don't like it. I think it ends up looking a little muddy and dirty when I try to use this as a cream bronzer just because it's so glowy. But the blush, I really do like. It's very similar to something else that you're gonna see high up on my list. So this is a mousse formula. You can see it's like really moussey. And it's one that you have to blend out quickly. If you sit there for too long, you're gonna struggle to get it fully blended in. I mean, you have a little more time than other cream products, but definitely don't apply it to both cheeks and then like dig through your bag for your brush to try to find it like, it's gonna be too late. These, if you want that really glowy, I'm on vacation, I've got a little bit of a sunburn look that I think is beautiful for summer these blushes will achieve that. I've been wearing, I'm not wearing these today, but I was wearing them in most of my recent videos. And like you can see, it just looks like sunburn almost. It looks like really glowy, like you're on vacation. It's not gonna be for everyone. I've had some comments saying, girl, you look ridiculous, but I love it. So that's fine with me. I, the more the merrier. But it is pretty shiny, so if you don't like that, I would probably avoid these. Personally though, I've been enjoying them a lot. Next, we have a drugstore one, and I have two of these. These are the Flower Beauty Blush Bombs. If you want an affordable alternative to the cloud paint, these are very similar. I would not say that the formulas are exact, but they're quite similar. So I have the shades Bubbly and Pinched. I think I might declutter Pinched. I like it, but I feel like I don't need both, but I'm gonna swatch Bubbly for you. This is such a unique blush color in my collection. It's just this beautiful pink. It's like a baby pink, almost purple, like almost like a lilac color. So pretty. This, much like the Glossier, you have all the time in the world to blend this out. It is not gonna set too quickly, so you can just sit there and tap it in. But this has almost like a serum-y glow to it. So if you wanna just look really healthy and radiant and flushed, this is the one. Like going back to these, because it's kind of shiny, like you can tell that it's makeup, but like it's cute still, but this, you almost can't tell it's makeup because the texture is so natural. It really like mimics just dewy, glowy, fresh skin. So if you're into that, if you want a no makeup makeup type of look, they, these blushes are really good for achieving that because the texture is just so dewy. But once they do set down, it wears pretty well throughout the day. It's not like going back to some of these, Sometimes these stick products in the cream format, they just don't last as well throughout the day, but these liquids, you have time to blend them out, but then once they're set, they're set. So I, I highly recommend these. I've been talking about these for years. I still think they're amazing. Flower Beauty Blush Bombs are bomb. Okay, moving into the top three. Milk Makeup Bronzer Stick, it's a classic. I thought that this might be lower on my list. I moved it around a few times, but I still think this is such a great cream bronzer. I thought that the Persona one was gonna be similar when I tried it, but it's not really. The textures are a bit different. This one, it's a, I don't wanna say it's matte, but it's more matte than the Persona bronzer. It's more of a natural like satin finish, whereas the Persona is really balmy and dewy. This one is a little more matte. The undertone is a bit more neutral, so you can use it as a cream bronzer or you can do some like minor contouring with it very easy to blend out but what i will say is unless this is going to be the only bronzer in your collection i would buy the mini so let me put them side by side this is how big the full size is this is how big the mini is and the full size i've had this for years i've used it a ton and i still have a ridiculous amount of product in here i was gonna say i don't think anyone could use this up but that's not true because i was on instagram the other day and i saw nicole renee i'm sure a lot of you guys know and love nicole as much as i do and she shared that she had used an entire one up and i thought that was incredible i have not this has still been going strong i feel like i will have this forever until it expires which it probably has but it still works fine for me great undertone very easy to work with and i think this lasts better than this this is like a little more balmy this is a little more satiny okay the top two 
it was not hard for me to know which one was the top two. When I set all these products in front of me, I immediately was like, which ones are going to be at the top? And these were the two I grabbed. The only part that was challenging was deciding what is number one and what is number two. But number two is from Bare Minerals. You know I love Bare Minerals so much. This is their Bounce and Blur blush. This is so good. So this, I debated putting in here because it's kind of like, it's not a cream to powder really. It's a cream that's in a, in a pan. So, but it's not super creamy. It's kind of like ColourPop Super Shock texture almost. But you guys, the name of this, Bounce and Blur, is so accurate. I mean, I don't know about the bounce part, but the blur part, this is the only cream product that I actually think is blurring because oftentimes it's those powder products that give you more of that filtered, smooth, blurred effect. Whereas cream products, because they often have more of a dewy or balmy finish to them, they can emphasize texture or pores. Not necessarily a bad thing, but they don't tend to look as smooth on the skin as powders but also powders tend to look a little bit more makeupy so it's like what's the trade-off the trade-off is this no that didn't make sense but what i mean is this is this is the best of both worlds because you get that really natural cream effect but it gives you the smooth finish of a powder as i'm saying all this i'm like maybe this should be my number one no no i love my number one but this is amazing this is such a good blush. Even the shade right here, it looks really dark. I have Mauve Sunrise. It's probably the darkest one here, but it's so beautiful. It just gives you like that, how do I describe this? I love wearing it in the winter because I feel like if you are around my skin tone, this gives like that winter flush. But I also think this would be perfect if you have more of a medium skin tone, like this color. I didn't even realize how much I was gonna love this. This came, I was buying something else from Bare Minerals and they like threw this in as an extra or something, because this is just a mini, but it's one of my favorite blushes in my entire collection. Creams, powders, doesn't matter. This one is amazing. So if you guys know me, you probably have been able to guess the top spot. It's going to this. How ironic. These other two kind of meet midway through my list, this one at the very top, but this is amazing. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in Pink Gasm. I love it so much. This. I'm gonna try to link it, but it has been sold out for so long ever since, well, it's been sold out for a while because I feel like it's been hyped up for a while, but within the last few months, Madison Beer shared her makeup tutorial, I think it was on Vogue, and she mentioned that she uses this blush, and I feel like after that, I was seeing everyone say, okay, I need to get it, because this is like her holy grail blush, and she mentioned in the video that she uses just like a ton of it. This, honestly, so similar to this one, but I find that this one is a little bit easier to blend out and it's slightly smoother on the skin. Probably because this one sets down a little bit faster. This is very glowy as well. It's definitely not as like serum-y as something like the Flower Beauty or even the Glossier. It has a sheen to it, kind of like a highlight, but I find that it still looks natural. There's no noticeable like glitter particles on your cheek. It just looks like you're naturally flushed. The tone of this pinkgasm especially, it just kind of gives you like that sunburnt type of effect. If you're around my skin tone, it has that perfect reddish undertone to it, like a rose gold red undertone that looks like you were kissed by the sun. Like, I just, I think this looks so natural and so glowy. Like every time I wear it, I feel like a Charlotte Tilbury model. Like, you know that look that they have that I struggle to achieve with other products, but when I wear this, I'm like, yes, I look like a Charlotte Tilbury model. It's beautiful. It's expensive, and that's the difference. This, for me, I'm like, worth the price. These, not as much for me. That's just me, though, and that's why I'm really curious to hear your answers down below. Would you rank these differently? Maybe something at my bottom would have been your top or vice versa, so let us know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do have a ranking playlist that I'll leave linked down below if you want to watch more videos in this format, and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye!